Hi, welcome to this week's edition of Quick Hits. Novak Djokovic made big news on Sunday winning the Italian Open, even though Rafael Nadal and Roger Federer went th weren't there to challenge him in the final rounds. He also benefited from a withdrawal in the semifinal. But, you know, the story emerging here with Novak is that he's really, he's having the best year of anyone on the tour, really, and he's got a better record if you look at his titles than Roger and Rafael combined. So this really tells you that this kid's for real. One of the interesting aspects of what happened in Rome is it brought to light Novak's career management. You know, here's a guy who's been criticized for pulling out of a couple of big matches with physical problems that some people questioned and said, really, you know, he should have finished the match. It wasn't that important. But what he's showing now is a kind of a, a shrewdness, a willingness, and, and a desire really to do what's best for him in terms of his career ambition of being number one, of, of displacing Nadal as well as Federer. And in that sense, you know, there are a lot of the other guys in the past, the Jimmy Connors, the Ivana Lendl's, they've pulled this kind of stuff before. And, you know, nobody's really held it against them in the long term. So in addition to everything else, that terrific game, the good fighting spirit and stuff, Djokovic really has a tremendous amount of drive and a really ruthless willingness to accomplish his goals. You're all familiar with that old saying, if a tree falls in the forest, if no one's there, does it make a sound? Well, you could almost say that about the WTA Tour these days. If there's a tour out there called the WTA Tour, but nobody's playing, is anything happening? You know, this goes back to the Williams sisters when they decided they perhaps weren't going to want, didn't want to be as committed as, as previously to playing all the time, all the required events, all the slams and everything else. And it really has continued with Justine Hennon, who's really taken sort of time off here and there. She's uh, announced that really she's going to do what's best for her career. The reality, unfortunately, is that, you know, the WTA is existing kind of by virtue of the Grand Slams, more or less. And they've got all these problems. There's a, a rebellion in the ranks. Maria Sharapova last week went to town on the WTA about what their demands are in terms of public relations and things like that. You know, it reminds you of the old days when the Virginia Slims tour when the women like Chris Everett, Martina Navratilova, Ivan Gulagang, all these women were playing all the events all the time. Granted, the money wasn't as big then. It was a great chance for them to make the dough. But I think part of the problem today, really, is that you've got a lot of women out there who are getting a tremendous amount of fame, all the money they need and things like that, and in Grand Slam performances. And a lack of support for the WTA Tour on a week-to-week -week, week basis is kind of disappointing. Well, that's it for this week. Remember to stop by at my weblog, Peter Bodo's Tennis World, at tennis.com, and uh, we'll see you down the pipe.